every time a recession comes around, it's different than the last one. Uh, and, and this one, what is different is that there's extremely low inventories of metals. And, you know, the, in, in the London Metals Exchange, they're, at, they're historic lows in product. So there's not a lot there. You've got this Russian situation. And Russian is a, you know, they mine, they have a lot of mines and they produce a lot of metal and they sell that worldwide. Well, they're not selling worldwide anymore because nobody's buying it. So, you know, those types of things can affect any of the supply chain demand for metals into a recession. So, but there's certain things in this time that make it a little bit more unusual than the last time. And as I say, mining has always been a very cyclic industry. Your, your, your commodity prices go up and down and the mining goes up and down with it. But we've got several things in our favor right now for an extended, what I would term an extended bull run in the mining industry. Everybody in the mining space right now believes they're in the beginning of a bull cycle in mining and commodities. So let's see what happens. Welcome to this RTD interview. Today, I'm excited to have first-time guest, Mr. Ralph Shearing, the director and CEO of Atele Mining, a Canadian mining company with two Mexican gold, silver, and base metal mining projects. And today, he's joined us to share his thoughts on the economy, the importance of precious metals, as well as opportunities and updates in the mining space. So, Ralph, welcome to RTD Interviews. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure to be here and uh, happy to share my story. Well, thank you for joining me. Looking forward to find out what's happening uh, as far as with the projects uh, with Atele. But before we dive into that... I'm just curious to get a little bit about your current assessment as to where we're at and how things are shaping up and the importance of precious metals now and in the future. So out of curiosity, you know, what are some things that ex excites you at this current moment, as well as possibly concerns you as well towards the you know, global macro market type of situations? Sure. Well, you know, we're, in, we're living in interesting times these days, aren't we? I mean, the as far as the, the overall look at precious metals in the markets, etc., you know, the government's been printing money like crazy. This COVID situation, uh, the, all the support that's gone into COVID, huge money supply out there. So, I mean, that's a real concern for the markets, the inflation that's coming in now. You can see large inflation numbers coming all across the board. Governments are increasing the the interest rates, um, it's all sp smells very good for precious metals. And then the, the ongoing situation in Ukraine, well, I mean, that's a real concern. It's a real concern to, to everybody in the world, in my opinion. And it brings a lot of uncertainty into the into the one's mind. And, you know, where is this all going to go? I mean, are we going back into a Cold War situation with Russia? Uh, all of that is a lot of uncertainty in there. And I think, you know, Traditionally, precious metals shine in uncertain environments. So, you know, I'm really excited about the precious metal market, mining market these days. Uh, the body prices are way up. We're doing great on the mining side of things. So uh, I think we've got a really good future ahead of us for precious metals. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that. So, you know, one of the things I want to definitely piggyback on and just to lay somewhat of a, a, a better understanding and foundation for those that might perhaps not be new to the, you know, educational space as far as gold and silver being uh, I guess, great hedges in uncertain times such as this. But then you hinted at, you know, the inflation aspect. And that's one thing that's, you know, starting to get a lot of people's attention. Mm. And yeah. so I, I'm curious to get your thoughts. You know, I think I forgot what the last figures were 7.9 or whatever the CPI numbers they give us. Uh, you know, the average person's experiencing something a lot higher than that. How much longer, in your opinion, can they continue to uh, give a one figure while people experience something different? perhaps when you're on what you think. <laughs> that's a really good question and i don't know how governments decide what to do on these types of things but you know everybody's money is getting so beat up on inflation that they're not you know they're not having as much buying power as they did a while ago um it, it's just a really really bad situation you know, the dollar value is going down so where do you park your money to guard against that you know, it's classic precious metals throughout history. You know, you look at precious metals. Uh, I always give the analogy that back uh, 300, 400 years ago, a certain little bit of gold would buy you a loaf of bread. Well, you know, that same amount of gold will buy you a loaf of bread today. So, you know, gold has not gone down in value and it, and it likely never will. So it'll retain its value. Um, it's a good hedge against inflation, a good hedge against uncertain times. And uh, I think everybody should have a piece of it in this current market. 
All right, good point there. And I'm also curious, you know, from, from the mining side of things, you know, increased costs all around the boards tend to impact, uh, you know, some, some mining uh, companies' ability to function, you know, in profit, you know, in a profitable manner. So as far as the increased costs, energy costs, things of that nature, how is it impacted, or if, if at all, uh, what's going on down with, uh, with, with Adelaide Mining? Well, it, your costs are up. There's no question about it. I mean, fuel costs are up, uh, electricity costs, not up too much in, in Mexico where we operate. But on the, on the other hand, metal prices are way up. So the metal prices have gone up in a much uh, more than the, your, your costs have gone up. So, you know, we're doing fine. And the other key to that is be a low cost producer. Get your costs down as low as possible to guard against when metal prices will eventually fall off. And they will eventually fall off. This is a cyclic industry. Um, but if you've if got your operations running lean, mean, keep your costs down, um, um, and you're going to be able to weather the lower prices in metals. But as far as I can see and talking to the, the big uh, commodity brokers, traffic air, et cetera, they're looking for another year or more very good metal prices ahead of us. So, you know, it's time to really make money and, and get things moving properly. Um, Keep, keep your costs low. We're low cost on our Campo Morado project, We're about 87 cents all in staining costs, uh, cost per pound of zinc equivalent produced. Zinc's trading at almost $2 a pound these days. So, you know, this it's a really good margin. Our, our Tabueto project, which we're just getting ready to start, the construction is essentially finished. We're in testing mode now. Once we start production there, we predict we'll be producing about $865 per gold equivalent ounce produced. Gold's trading $1,900 $1, these days. So, you know, good, good margins in our company. All right, all right. sounds good. So ultimately, so keep the, keeping the cost low allows you guys to uh, possibly weather any storms that, uh, that might be lurking. So, you know, before we get into, you know, just some of the benefits and whatnot in, in the mining space there, curious to get your thoughts because you said you know possibility of, of, a, of a sell-off or a correction or, or something in regards to the metal prices because it's cyclical you know right now it's doing pretty yeah, well absolutely. so there possibility of something uh coming in the near future that could cause some type of shakeout and so i'm curious to get your thoughts on that because you know not to, to to be doom and gloom but you know there's so many events occurring now that i want the viewers to make sure that they're aware of that can lead to events that you know you're, you're kind of hinting at so now we're kind of witnessing like the global bond sell-off in a sense where borrowing costs are increasing and federal reserves trying to taper and do all types of crazy things that's never been done before and so there's concerns of a recession and so in prior years recession leads to corrections in markets you know equity prices and so those time frames usually lead to a slowdown of mining uh, uh, uh operations as well but given the current environment we're in we're also experiencing all-time high demand in a lot of base metals precious metals so do you think you know we will experience prior recessions in typical fashion given a new increased demand for gold in particular for as a hedge against all this craziness going on? Well, every, every time a recession comes around, it's different than the last one. Uh, and, and this one, what is different is that there's extremely low inventories of metals. And, you know, the, in, in the London Metals Exchange, they're, ex, they're historic lows in product. So there's not a lot there. You've got this Russian situation. And Russian is a, you know, they mine, they have a lot of mines and they produce a lot of metal and they sell that worldwide. Well, they're not selling worldwide anymore because nobody's buying it. So, you know, those types of things can affect any of the supply chain demand for metals into a recession. So, you know, it's a good question. I don't have the answer for you, but there's certain things in this time that make it a little bit more unusual than the last time. And as I say, mining has always been a very cyclic industry. Your, your, your commodity prices go up and down and the mining goes up and down with it. But we've got several things in our favor right now for an extended, what I would term an extended bull run in the mining industry. And these bull runs can last four to seven years or more. Um, we'll just see what happens. We're, we believe, everybody in the mining space right now believes they're in the beginning of a bull cycle in mining and commodities. So let's see what happens. All right, good. Yeah, that's very true there. And so I'm curious, because you mentioned the LME, so I definitely want to get your thoughts on, on the nickel, you know, futures explosion that took place a couple of weeks ago. Did that catch you by surprise or, or what, you know, because I'm, I'm assuming at some point we're going to see gold, silver type of explosions possibly. And I'm sure that'll be definitely ex extremely exciting for the mining space in particular. So did that catch you by surprise or what? Well, yeah, sure. The nickel thing caught everybody's surprise. In fact, uh, the traffic era guys, they had to go out and uh, 
borrow a whole pile of money because they're offside in a lot of their hedges because of it. So, you know, those things that they happen, um, they're, they're very surprising, but it looks like it's you know, trending out now, getting you know, averaging out. Things are come back to more of a bit of a norm there. But um, sure, I mean, they surprise you. You just got to deal with them. Go ahead. Although we, we don't deal in nickel ourselves, so it doesn't necessarily affect us. All right. Sounds good there. Now, I'm curious to get your thoughts on gold because you mentioned Russia having gold and, you know, nations not being able to actually do business with them because of all the, you know, sanctions and things of that nature. But uh, I'm assuming it has to be, you know, somewhat exciting on your end to hear gold mentioned in the news more now. And especially the fact that Russia has, I guess, brought more attention to it with them looking, their central bank looking to purchase directly from the, from the market for their, you know, I guess their own hedge against, you know, the SWIFT system, things of that nature. So we're going to hear more about gold. And so gold moving forward, do you see it returning back to some monetary form in the system, perhaps? Well, it would be very wise for governments to do that. And will they do that is another question. I, I, I really don't know. Um, but I think if governments decided to, to peg it to gold a little bit, uh, it would be much better for their currency and very, very good for the long stability of governments. The, you know, the dollar, just printing money, because it's there and you can print it, just devalues it. Um, if you peg it to gold, then you have a, a value there, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't change other than the price of gold goes up and down. Uh, the, the future of gold, and you know, I've been in the industry a long time, and I and I've always heard the gold bugs, and I'm a bit of a gold bug myself, to tell the truth. But a lot of the gold bugs, you know, oh, it's five, four, or five thousand dollar gold coming, and you know, I've never seen it. I'd love to see it, but I think the real, being more realistic. Um, over the coming year or two, that you know, 2000 $2,500 gold is, is definitely in our sights based on the uncertainty in the world and the uh, money supply, um, things like that. So, you know, great if it goes higher, but, uh, you know, at eighteen at $2,000, even $1,800, $1,700, we're making great money in our company. Mm, that's good. That's good. Now, so because a lot of people here definitely are, are, are interested in silver, given the fact that it has come nowhere close to its previous all-time highs of, you know, $50, mm -hmm. you know, just for inflation or not. So, you know, from a, you know, practical standpoint of holding physical silver, because it's, you know, denominated in smaller units of a fiat currency, but what, what's your, what's your stance on, on silver to gold ratio perhaps? And what are you seeing coming out of the ground with Adelaide and things of that nature? And, you know, is that something that people really should pay attention to in particular, in your opinion? Well, I think, you know, gold and silver is precious metals that they, they tend to, trade together and then if gold goes up, silver goes up and, and, and conversely, if they go down, they go down together too. So the, I mean, the ratio of the gold silver, uh, we produce both. So, you know, we'll be on our Tawaweto project that's just coming into production. will be 70% of our value will be gold. Um, so you know, those are, those are good numbers. Um, we produce quite a bit of silver in our Campo Morado project and we're hoping to produce more. Uh, I think, Silver um, equally as gold. I think gold's a little better, but gold, silver still provides that uh, store of value as well. And it's a little easier for people to buy an ounce of gold than this an ounce of silver because you know twenty five dollars for an ounce of gold or silver as opposed to nineteen whatever for an ounce of gold. So that's tends to attract um, you know smaller investors to buy silver than than gold. But the other way to play the Precious metal market is, is junior public companies, so mining companies that are in the space um, and have very good growth ability. You know, stocks tend to trade in multiples of, of the gold uh, prices, et cetera. So that's a good way to, to make multiple times your money in an upward trending precious metal market. All right, sounds good. So yeah, let's dive right into the mining space. So it, as I mentioned before, I had a, a member, of your, member of your team, David Rose, on the show a while ago to introduce it to us. But since then, the audience has grown a little bit. So if you don't mind, give us a little bit of uh, just some of the foundational pieces uh, of Adelaide Mining, if you don't mind, just so people can sure, become familiar yeah, with no it. Sure, no problem. Um, so we have two, two mining projects. One has been in production for a while. It's called Campo Morado. It's in the state of Guerrero. It's a polymetallic mine. We produce uh, primarily zinc at this point in time. We produce, have been producing zinc, lead, gold, silver, and we're going to start to produce copper mid to late April. We're actually moving to an ore body that has higher grade copper. We're going to start to make a copper concentrate and sell that. So we've been doing really well on that project. We're, you know, we're making two to three million dollars EBITDA monthly out of, on, on Campo Morado. Um, and we expect Plus that, one, seven, oh, sorry, seven, eight, seven. <laughs> got to turn that off. Um, once we start producing copper, then we expect to obviously have a, another income source there. The other thing we've been doing in Campo Morado is 
doing what I, what I term a full court press on metallurgy. Campurado has got some interesting challenges to its metallurgy, uh, but we, we have been in a metallurgical testing program for about four months. We've probably got another quarter to go to finish it off, but we're starting to see some, some pretty interesting and favorable results that will allow us to increase our precious metal recoveries as well as our base metal recoveries. So, you know, those are, that's underway um, and we'll see what happens. But if it happens, if it goes the way we want it to, then we really are going to increase the revenue out of that project. On Talueto, this is a goal. It's a fantastic goal project. That's a district scale project. We've only put in exploring along one major structure. And we've come up with a reserve there that gives us a 10.9 year mine life. And we have been under construction, building a 1,000 ton per day mining op, underground mining operation that's just imminently ready to start. We're just in a testing phase of the equipment right now. Uh, we hope to get production going in the next, within the next one to two weeks. And, and that project has huge exploration potential. You know, once we get the revenue going, get it into production, then maybe the fourth quarter this year, we intend to start exploration. And I believe we can expand this project to 1,500 to 2,000 tons a day within the next couple of years, and maybe up to 3,000 tons per day, two to five years time, framed by having exploration success. But it'll come easy. We have many, many multiple targets. Even on the targets we've been drilling, we still haven't seen the, haven't found the limits of the mineralization to depth or a long strike. So it, it, it's a very robust project and primarily a gold producer. Hmm, interesting. So thanks for sharing. That. And also the, the, the background image behind you, is that, you know, parts of the property that's, or, or yeah, give us. Yeah, that's, that's our main, uh, this little bit, that's our main project. That's Tabo Beto. So this area here, let's see, the guy there is our main zone, Creston, yeah. the big lung, that's sort of big streak up there. Um, through growing structure, uh, just, I don't know, it's hard to get it here, but it starts down in Cinco de Mayo, mm -hmm. goes all the way up over here, and then it goes up over the hill, over the other side, down in the in the arroyo on the other side. And that's just one structure, and there's multiple structures, and we know there's at least eight more that we have not yet tested. We have to get out there and test them. So there's a lot of potential here, and I, and this project will grow and, and will become a very, probably one of premier mine in Mexico over the next several years. Interesting. Now, just for so the, for those that might be new to the mining space in general, as I mentioned, we're you know we're we're beginners beginners over here. Uh, you know, when you say production, because earlier you gave us some figures saying that one of the projects was about seventy percent in, in gold production or whatnot. Can you give us a little break that down a little bit more as far as the process? You, you find it, you you start drilling, you go through the process, and then you bring up the ore and how does how does that all oh, that. Give us that little oh, yeah. bit if you don't mind. It, it's an interesting game, right? So first off, the exploration side of things. An exploration, um, one out of a thousand exploration projects gets to be a mine. That's generally the statistic that people use. Um, exploration is very risky, but it's very lucrative when you actually find the mine. So we've now found, we found the mine. Our exploration has proved up enough uh, reserves to actually go and build the mine and start producing. Uh, so now we get underground, we blast it out, we truck it out with a, with a truck and we put it into the mill, we crush it up into smaller chunks this size and then it goes into a ball mill and it pulverizes into a powder. And then you put it through flotation cells which allow you to separate the components, the various components of the rock. So, you know, we're, we're gonna produce a zinc concentrate, a lead concentrate and a copper concentrate. So you, the various flotation cells will allow you to separate those metals from each other and produce your concentrates. And you load in the truck and you send it off to, to we send it to our commodity broker called Traffic Era and they'll, they'll load it on the ship and send it anywhere in the world where the smelters will buy it. And then they melt it down and then you have your metal. Okay, thanks for sharing that. Just because I always wonder, you know, the process from the exploration, discovery, bring out the ground, and then moving forward. Because you mentioned how with the copper uh, vein coming online, it's just increasing your profitability. So I think it's always good to realize from an investment standpoint that you guys have not even really scratched the surface as far as what is underground uh, for the yes, company. Exactly there, right. so. yeah. And, you know, in our project, there's various types of uh, mineral projects or mineral mining like some guys will mine it and do a heat bleach so they break the ore up and they stack it on a pad and they put a dilute cyanide solution through it collect all of that and recover their ore that way ours is different we have a sulfide base based uh, mineralization and, that, and it's a different process to recover it so there's different processes to actually recover gold and silver out of your ore 
Okay, thank you. So we're so you know as we draw towards the end, we're at the end of you know quarter one here. I want to just get a, get an idea as to what this past how this year has been for the company overall, valuation wise. You know, you guys are publicly traded. Give us some of the financial side of things, if you don't mind. No, we've done really well um, at Camp Marauder. Our last quarter, we had a net profit of about nineteen million dollars, uh, and you know that's a good number. Uh, we've been steadily building. Tabuweto. You know, we've had a little hiccups, a few hiccups here and there. One of our funders went to went into receivership, so we lost a little, little bit of money there, but we just announced a race to replace it. Um, so overall, we've made really, really good progress this year and have made some decent money on Camp Amarado, and now we get Tabuweto into production, and it's going to, going to vastly improve. All right, sounds good. Now, so share with the audience uh, for those that might want to find out more information. You know, where, what's your what's your trading symbol? Where you guys trading at? Your ticker symbol, things of that nature. If you don't mind, now, of course, I don't yeah. have everything down below, but just it's good to hear from from directly from you. <laughs> yeah, our symbols are ATLY on the TSX Venture Exchange in Canada, and we trade on the OTC under the symbol ATLYF. All right. Well, Ralph, I thank you for joining us for this interview. Definitely, you know, shining some light on the updates there of the project. And so definitely, you know, there's lots of opportunity uh, 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 right in front of us. And so definitely looking forward to connecting you further with the audience. And so uh, for those that are interested, then go to your website for more details as well. Are, are you guys happen to be covered anywhere else that, you know, might be worth mentioning to the audience just for a broader viewpoint on you know, the yeah, company? You know, just, just do a, you know, a hashtag Altelay mining or Altelay. And, and we have been doing a lot of interviews. It's a lot of uh, web, webinars type things, podcasts. People can get a really good idea of what we're up to and then, uh, you know, call the company and call my guys here and the company that we're happy to share any information that uh, is requested. All right. Well, sounds good. Well, Ralph, once again, thank you for joining us. RT interviews. Definitely looking forward to following progress there and having some bound, someone back on in the future to keep us up to date with developments. And definitely it's always good to hear progress being made. And you guys are doing a good job there. So thanks for joining us on RT interviews. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure. Have a great day.